We're continuing our discussions here with folks from the uh, Cypher study, or Cypher grant. And we're here with Dorina from the University of Witswatersrand in uh, South Africa. And we appreciate your taking the time to visit with us. Thank you for having and, me. And I, I want you to just kind of give us the background on the grant that you received and uh, how you, maybe, maybe a little bit of how you applied for it and so forth. Okay, I had a, an idea. This actually came from a discussion with a friend and we were talking about PMTCT in South Africa and where the gaps are. And one of the things that always comes up when you talk about PMTCT in South Africa is the, the loss of women from care in the postpartum period. That women remain in care while they are pregnant, but after delivery, then the, the, the clinics cannot trace them. And that's a big issue, and it is mentioned in every presentation. Often we don't, we don't try to deal as with though, it. As though it just is. Yes. So it's like an elephant in the room. <laughs> so we know it's a problem, but it is a difficult one to tackle. Yeah. Um, it's not a convenient sample type of study um, and I think that's usually the challenge and so we thought okay there's a way to get around it it's gonna be tough but why not and so we put together a letter of intent that, that went to Cypher surprisingly they wanted a full proposal and then we submitted a full proposal and they came back with a yes and so we're about to go into this unknown and find out what it is that we can do so uh, give us an idea of what you're what you're going to look for and how you're going to do this. Okay, so what we're hoping to do is essentially to do a study that would help us optimize a tracing approach for postpartum women. So we're going to enroll them at the time of delivery, after delivery, and then we're going to follow them up for 18 months. Follow them up wherever they go. Because usually when we talk about following women up, we assume that they are, they are in the same area as the clinic they received care from. But what we, we are starting to know and what has sort of been the whisper in the, in the field is that women often move away from the area where they received the care while they were, they, they were pregnant. And so what we're going to do is we're going to go to wherever it is that they're going to go. So we're going to enroll them, do a, uh, an interview at baseline um, after delivery to find out what their plans are. And then we're going to follow their movement through the clinics that they attend. So we're gonna we're gonna try to get an, as extensive information about their plans going forward, and then and then follow them there, and then try to to find their data at the clinics, find their data at the central laboratory service, to be able to map and see where they're going, to find a, the best way to trace women in as as non-disruptive way as possible, because when we trace them, we expect them to come back to the clinic. We don't go to them. So what we're hoping to do is to find a simple way of tracing them without requiring them to move back to the original clinic. So helping them to link to whatever clinic is nearest to them. Because what we care about is them linking to a clinic and receiving HIV care. Mm -hmm. And ensuring that their babies are also linked to care. So when you approach them about joining the study, you're going to make it evidence to them that this is important. Yes that for their overall health and staying in care is like, and, and being continually followed, yes. it's really important. Yes, so we're gonna make sure that it's for them to understand. And I think a lot of women understand it's, it's what the clinic expects of them that I think it's starting to, it is un, unreasonable because uh. for some reason they need to move for support, for cu cultural reasons. Um, so this is... But just keeping that link going, that this was me here and now I'm over here. Yes, but we don't talk to them about how important it is to link irrespective of where you link, mm -hmm. right? And because they are postpartum women, that whether if they link, then their children are linked. So we, we need to, to make them understand that, they, that the study is aiming to, to optimize a tracing approach from them, for them and their children mm -hmm. to facilitate them linking in care and making sure that we obviously know that they are in care and the children link in care, they test for HIV, and then if they are positive, we're able to get them on ART as early as possible. Do you have any hurdles about, like, we have hurdles in our country about uh, being too aggressive with knowing too much about patients? Yes. And so we have to get permissions. Yes. Okay, do you have that as well? So we do have partial um, ethics approval to do this. Um, we, we are waiting for permission for the sites to, get, um, to, to allow us to work with their patients. So as far as regulatory bodies are concerned, we, we have approval, but we have to be careful with the patients. Um, a lot of the time HIV positive women are actually, they don't want to be traced. And a lot of the time they would give you wrong information on purpose. 
So to avoid this, we're, we're asking for personal information just to be able to find out what clinic is near to you. And so we, we don't intend to follow them up personally in their homes, in their personal space. We just want to know what clinic to go to. Yeah. So perhaps that's a little less invasive and we're hoping that that will dissuade people from giving us incorrect information. Are there other areas of, of research you're going to be doing? Is there anything nested in this? Or is it just this linking? So it, it is about link. The main project for that, that is being paid for by Cypher um, is about linkage of mothers, but particularly babies. What we want to make sure is that the babies are tested because um, many babies fall through the, through right. the cracks right. and, uh, and children don't fare as well as adults if they don't begin antiretroviral therapy on time. So we want to make sure that encourage women to come back into care. So the study will have... Because they may show negative at birth and then later they show positive. Yes, because um, for children who are exposed to ART, if the mothers continue to breastfeed, then they are at risk of becoming HIV positive um, after, after birth, right. right? And how is that working now? Because I know at some point we said breastfeeding was, you know, the formula was not a good thing because it wasn't safe. Breastfeeding was safer. Or where are we with that today? So at the moment, the message is breastfeeding all the way on, on the condition that the mother is on ART the whole time. Right. So that's another reason why we need to make sure they remain in care. Because if they fall out, then they don't. They run out of supplies. They run out mm -hmm. of drugs, and so then the viral loads increase. And the higher the viral load, the higher the risk to the infant. So breastfeeding is safer, particularly in an environment where women don't have necess um, easy access to, to potable water, right? So the recommendation right now is breastfeeding all the way. But for that, we need to make sure the women remain in care um, to prevent transmission to the child during, during the postpartum period. But there's another issue that comes into it because a lot of women test HIV negative um, by the time they, they deliver. But the risk of acquiring HIV after delivery remains high. And then breastfeeding. Yes, we require them to continue to breastfeed. But those who test HIV negative initially, right. they need to continue to test. Because, because they may be converted. Because they can convert. And the risk of transmission to the baby is higher during, during early phases of conversion because of our load right. is Spikes. very high. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, it seems like a very good study. I hope and, so. I mean, uh, the others that I've interviewed for the Cypher Grants are all quality work and really seems like a fit and niche. Yeah. Whereas other wells unfilled. Well, it's, it's um, what the, the Minister Mussolini said, it's, it's the last mile, right? It's really closing in those little gaps where, where the leaks are. And for some people, it's like, well, we're sitting at 1.5, why is this important? That if we don't close the gap, then it could get bigger. Right, exactly. Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for spending the time with us to explain that to us. Thank you for taking the time to speak to me. Have a good ex experience here at the conference. Thank you.